okay from with this video we'll be getting introduced with another protocol that is ospf the most commonly used protocol and the main reason it is used it's a standard protocol that is a one one major advantage we get and also there is no limit for the hop counts we have something called unlimited hops so let's start let's talk about ospf protocol open shortest path first so in this video i'm going to walk through with some of the basic overview of the ospf protocol the features and probably in our next videos we'll be getting into more in detail of the different process the basic process what happens whenever you advertise the osp of first time okay so let's let's get into some of the basic overview of the protocol so ospf is considered as a link state protocol now the link state protocol is something like is going to maintain each and every possible route a link state information of to reach each and every destination so which means let's say I got a router one and from the router one to reach this router five, I got multiple routes. So it's going to maintain the information of each and every possible route to reach that particular destination. So that's what we call as link state behavior. So that's something OSPF is capable of doing that. And it's a standard protocol runs on Cisco as well as non Cisco devices. And the algorithm used by OSPF is Dijkstra or shortest path first algorithm. So it's going to calculate the shortest path to reach that particular destination based on again bandwidth. So the metric calculation is going to use 10 to the power of 8 divided by bandwidth is the formula used by OSPF to, to find the shortest path. So whichever the route is having the least cost that route will be considered as the best route and it's not going to see any other factors like if you just get back to EHRP, EHRP will see bandwidth, delay, load, MTU and reliability and it's not going to see all those values. And this is the default uh, formula used a Cisco method to find the best route. It's a classless protocol, supports your subnetworks, FLSM, VLSM, and then summarization, CADR values, everything, just like EHRP protocol. And it's going to send incremental updates. So which means when whenever you configure OSPF between any two routers, first time it will send the complete routing information and the next time it will send only whenever there is a change maybe after one hour after after 20 minutes 15 minutes whenever there is a change maybe if the network goes down network comes up but periodically there is something called hello messages goes for every 10 seconds to check whether the neighbor is there or not so probably this process will will see more in detail as we go with our next videos and updates via multicast and it uses 224.005 multicast address just like EHRP uses 224.0010, the same way. And the metric calculation, as we discussed, the metric used by OSPF to calculate the best route, it's going to use cost, and that is something calculated based on this formula, 10 to the power of eight divided by bandwidth in bits per second. So which means if you have more bandwidth, the cost will come down automatically. So if you have more cost, sorry, more bandwidth, the cost will come down, which means the least cost is is considered as the best route so least cost is nothing but the best route nothing but if you have more bandwidth the cost will come down automatically administrative distance is 110 110 so 110 is the administrative distance for ospf like in ehrp it is 90 in ehrp and rip 120 that is the default administrative distance values so this is something standardized, but we can change. And EHRP is the only product is the protocol which supports only equal cost load balancing. Unlike uh, EH, sorry, OSPF supports only equal cost load balancing, which means if both the routes, let's say you got three routes, and in the one route we got a cost of one thousand, and the second route is having the cost of one thousand, and the third route is having the cost of two thousand. Now this one thousand is the best route, but as of now I got two routes which is having the same cost. Now both routes will be used to forward the traffic. So that's what we call as equal cost load balancing. So it's going to support up to four equal paths. And then it's going to use some hierarchical design called areas. Probably we have a separate a session dedicated for discussing why OSPF uses areas. It's a kind of, uh, it's a kind of, it's a methodology used by OSPF to reduce the overhead when it comes to big size networks. So probably areas is a logical grouping of the routers. So more on the areas, we have a separate dedication dedicated on that particular thing. 
So these are just the basic overview or the features we can say of OSPF. The mainly OSPF is a standard protocol. I didn't list one more point here. So unlimited hops. There is no limit for the hop counts. If you talk about EHRP, EHRP maximum supports up to 255 hops and by default it supports up to 100 hops. If you talk about RIP, RIP supports up to 15 hops. But in OSPF, there is no limit for the hop counts. If you want to connect thousands of routers, very big network, service so network, we can use OSPF.